Before we begin tonight's episode, I'd like to remind the listeners that right now our new sponsor, Audible.com, is offering a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook download by going to audibletrial.com slash SOS radio. That's audibletrial.com slash SOS radio. No dash, listeners. Audible.com offers over 180,000 audiobook downloads available for your iOS device, Android, Kindle, or any other audiobook player. Head over to audibletrial.com slash SOS radio now. If you're into kitschy 1950s horror memorabilia, please visit our new sponsor, psychoswami.com. That's psychoswami.com. Right now, for listeners of the SOS-Radio podcast, Psychoswami is offering a 30% discount on any of their products by entering promo code SOS Radio. No dash, listeners. Hello, loyal listeners, and welcome to the SOS-Radio Podcast. All paranormal, all the time. My name is Jason Knight, president and founder of Chicago's own Supernatural Current Studies, and your host into the unknown. Tonight, I'm joined by my fellow SOSers and brothers-in-arms, Mr. Jojo Erie. Say hello, Jojo. Hey, how you doing? Joe Erie, Jojo's father. What's up, boys? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, of course, none other than Mr. Dave Black, SOS co-founder and Claire Sensitive. Mm. Hey. How you doing this evening? <laughs> oh, I'm great. This is great. How long did it take us to finally jump on today? I don't know. It's been a long time, though. I'm about ready to take all these power tools to your stupid Corvette. No, not the Corvette. <laughs> take my family, not the vet. Um, what's going on, listeners? This is the 38th episode of the SOS-Radio podcast. Tonight we're doing things different. We are live streaming this recording session on both Periscope at, at Chicago Ghosts and on Facebook Live at... Uh, Facebook.com slash Dave Odd. Why Dave Odd? That was my stage name for stand-up comedy but for many years. You're Dave Black now. I was actually Dave Black before I was Dave Odd, strangely enough. You were. You were. Mm-hmm. So we're live streaming this evening. Um, hopefully we'll get some questions rolling through as we're recording this edition of the podcast. I may have to interrupt what I'm saying to answer some questions coming through the live stream. So, again, uh, make sure and follow us at Chicago Ghosts on Periscope um, in the future, because we're going to be doing these live casts a lot more often. Guys, tonight I really wanted to recap fairly brief, fairly quickly, what happened in episode 37, live with Dylan Bell, renowned psychic Dylan Bell. Um, a lot of stuff went down especially for JoJo and Joe. Um, not much happened for Dave Black and myself, but I figured... I was so out of it that day. I was, like, so tired. Well, and that's and something I definitely, isn't that odd? And that's something I definitely want to talk about uh, later, what might have been going on there. But um, I want to recap what happened. Now that we've had two weeks to kind of mull it over, listen to the entire episode once it was complete and edited and uh, put out to the world, um, I want to see what you guys thought. We got a lot of decent feedback on that show. People really enjoyed it. Um, we had some good emails. Uh, Dylan Bell, just want to mention his website once again, opalstruth.com, opalstruth.com. Or you can get a hold of Dylan if you want your own psychic reading at uh, opalstruth.gmail.com. That's so, O-P-A-L-S? O-P-A-L-S, truth.com. Truth is spelled T-R-O-O-F, correct? No, T R U T H. Ah, yes. All right. It's not. Uh, it's not Southside. Cool. Yeah. Opalstruth at gmail.com or opalstruth.com if you want to hire Dylan to do your own reading. 
in case you were impressed with what happened on uh, episode 37. We were impressed. So, uh, guys, without further ado, what did you think of Mr. Dylan Bell and his and his readings? I mean, I guess first and foremost, as soon as uh, they came up, um, they they called me. They walked up to the house. As soon as I saw him, I'm like, wow, okay. It was that white light, that energy. I just felt instantly. It was the the white, the the white light. You know, the they good, were the very white. They were well, white. that yes, but you know, just very a good positive. Um, and uh, I knew that you know, just sometimes when you you meet people, you just know if they have it or they don't. You know, you don't no, not speaking. Um, top notch. I have talked to a shitload of psychic. You know, or you know, intuitive people in my life, and most of them are bullshit. You know, but. Like, instantly when I saw him, I knew. Um, and when I, I've never had anybody tell me so much um, that he did, you know, and you that so he much? would not know. Oh, okay. So detail, you know, okay. about, you know, things that he never would have known about, you know. A, a plus, man. A good guy. I mean, he, you know, he, he is the real deal, you know. Jojo, what do you think? I mean, following my dad's perspective, I would psychics, I mean, definitely before they came, I was kind of hesitant on whether they were real or whether they were just going to feed us a bunch of crap, you know, because a lot of people out there, unfortunately, are, and it sucks for the majority of people because when they take a look at psychics and they get something from a bad source, they think that's all of the psychics, but when you actually meet a real psychic, you'll know, and I, that's what we felt when they came to the house. I mean, we found out that... Like, just when they walked in without even saying anything, you could get that vibe. Or um, What really blew it away, though, was when we were actually doing the readings, which we'll probably get into later. Um, it was amazing. There's no way half of the stuff or just anything or just anything that he was saying could just come up off the top of his head. And when it's just consistent like that and when it's up multiple things... That just it blows it all away. So you're a believer. Oh yeah. In Dylan. Oh yeah. And, and let alone too, like he even said, it's like you know, give it a couple of days because we you might not know now, but you might pick it up in a day or two later of why. So let me ask, did you have something that a few days later you're like, oh god, that's what that meant? Oh yeah. So we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Dave, how about you, man? For me, like I said, I was really out of it that day. I just got back from my fourth Florida trip on the 13th. I was in Florida for 10 days. Um, and for eight of those ten days, we were just relaxing and hanging out at the beach and messing around with alligators and just having a good time. And it was uh, really hard for me to get back into the swing of things because I had been selling stuff that whole week. So by the time we got to that day, I was like, I was worn out and tired. So I like, I'm not discounting anything that he said. I do believe that he is legitimate, and I believe that he's got some real. Um, powers and stuff, but I was just, I was just kind of like, I was just out of it that day. It was really hard for me to kind of tune in, um, and especially when he was doing readings of us. The part of the problem for me is, as far as spirits or energies hanging around me or whatever, like I don't really think I, I mean, there's nobody that's passed away recently that I was particularly close to, you know? Like, there's nobody that's... There's no, like, close family member of mine that passed away any time in the last few years. My grandparents all passed away, like, ten years or more ago. Um, and the more recent grandparents that passed away, I wasn't, wasn't that close with to begin with. Um, I don't really have any, you know, close friends that passed away or anything like that. So, as far as people that have recently passed or whatever that are part of me or whatever, there was... There's really, I really have no connection there, so it was hard for me to tune in on that. There was one particular person I was thinking of. I've talked about her before. Her name was Lori, yeah. and I've had dreams about having conversations with her where I'll literally stop mid-conversation and be like, hey, didn't you die? And she'll it's, literally it's say... It's weird when, they, when, when, when you know that they're dead. You yeah. drop into them, and then you make eye contact. It's kind of like, wow, you know. And then I literally yeah. say to her in the dream, I'm like, hey, didn't, didn't you die? And she says without like missing a beat, like, well, yeah, but that doesn't mean 
we can't talk. Mm -hmm. And it was no, like such a real, it was such a, like, I know it's a dream, but it was so hey, real. Hey, you see this now, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but the up. weird thing is when you when you speak to the dead in dreams, they talk no big deal, but when they know that you know, it's kinda, almost a look like Well, I kind of feel like when, when like, you started talking to me, now. when you started talking to me about somebody that had an addiction mm -hmm. problem or whatever, she had recently had a DUI when I had met her. Um, she actually had a breathalyzer on her car because she, her, her mother passed away and she was really distraught and she was drinking and she drove one night and she got caught. So that kind of like rang true to me, but then immediately like the conversation sort of shifted into something else and that's where you came in. Yeah. And I kind of feel like it might have been Lori trying to get through to me and then whoever wanted to talk to you kind of yeah. like shoved her out of the way. Yeah. Be like, hey, 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 you exactly. barely even know this guy. Exactly. And uh, and then, yeah, so it seemed like everything was kind of leaning on you that night. Everything was sort of was sort of going towards you. And, I mean, we were in and your house. Both. We were but in your but house. But we were in your place. And, you, you know, so there already is that energy hanging around there to begin with. And yeah. then on top of that, um, you know, you were already kind of dialed in from the get-go, yeah. where I was just kind of like off well, the and, and But this is another thing, too, and why I said that white light is because I, I, I'm I, kind of both, you know, but I know I have that heavy white light with me, but I can get really dark, too, but I, it's a very strong white. Um, I think me and Dave yin and yang each other, and that's why we are so good together. So we, we, 60, Not, we I mean, 69 each other? It's probably five years, like, Joe. It never happened. We 69 uh, each other spiritually? Or or is, is I that mean, that kind, of, kind, kind of almost like the... Uh, what's that? The, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, infinity, the infinity symbol, yeah. okay? But, you know, spiritually, uh, you know, but... Um, yeah, so like I mean, you know, it's what 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 what, what when I noticed it's uh, Chase and Dylan were kind of like that, you know, kind of like me and Dave and I, and uh, which it, it it's almost that uh, that that spiritual connection where you kind of like balance the yin and yang, you know, um, it's like almost like the earth or water or you know, um, and uh, after. They left. I uh, I was pulling so much shit from them because wh whenever I meet, uh, it, it doesn't matter if they're intuitive or not. But sometimes I'll I'll, I'll meet certain people and it, whatever is attached to them, whatever. And and actually, you know what? Most times, whenever there is a, a spiritual person or there's ghosts or entities, they come after people that know that hey. Like they know, you know, so it's like they they know the people that know, so they run to them. But if they can't get help through them, uh, they're gonna jump to somebody else, you know. And it not like, we're all here for a different purpose. We all have different gifts, you know. And a lot of times, like when I meet people, whatever is attached to them for some reason, it, boom, it jumps to me, and I it just and and like it's like then it, I'm like I'm I'm pretty like much like fucked for a couple like weeks you know it just you know with dreams and this and that telling me things and it, you know eventually it just kind of like pushed it onto the other you know light um a couple things happened after they left um well I do want to so we'll we'll get into the actual readings mm -hmm. and then what happened post show um but my impression He's the real deal? He's definitely the real deal. I, I think he's the real deal, um, without question. Some of the things that he was touching on, um, some things that I knew from your past, um, other things that I had no clue about that only you or your son Jojo knew about, for him to pull on that and use those key words like schizophrenia, like mm -hmm. I'm seeing a tire, tire, that doesn't make any There's sense. No, like, and yeah. Joey's like, oh my God, and you're like... No way. And then you told the story about it's having crazy. the blowout with the tire, you know, tire blowout at your grandfather's funeral. You can't explain that. That's just, I didn't even take my head off. That is beyond uh, coincidence. So he, um, he, he, he said, yeah, she says, cut your hair. You look like a girl. How did he know I had long hair? No one knows I have long that's hair. That's true. You were I, wearing I, a hat. I, your, your sides are shaved very close. That's and right. it, and it's true. like uh, that's crazy. There's yeah. no yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. To so, be fair, they might have been talking about JoJo. <laughs> well, he is a girl, yeah, but he's transitioning right now. You're making fun of your own kid. I hope you know that. I don't care. <laughs> I love you no matter what. Uh, uh -huh. 
So, uh, in my opinion, very professional, um, caring, uh, intelligent. Um, you know, for being only 25 years old, he seems to have really mastered the the craft. Was the he 24, jargon. I think. 24, 24 going on 25. Really mastered the craft, the jargon, the the lingo. He knows what he's talking about. You know, he seems like a really gentle soul too. Yeah, like yeah a really just, like, just warm, very warm, really nice inviting. Guy. Yeah, it's so, one of those people that you meet that you're like, I don't think anyone has ever in the history of this person's existence uttered, I hate that guy. Like you know, you meet those people that are just so like chill. Remember Gary? Remember Gary from from the Chase Cafe? Oh, my Ray of Sunshine. <laughs> that's that's, that's right. just like super that's sweet, hippie like guy. chill hip, hippie dude. Like he just like I always like, call him my Ray of Sunshine. Just like <laughs> like a, he's just like a like a bummy Jesus type. Yeah, yeah. great. And it's just like there's I people you meet that you're just like nobody has ever hated this guy. Yeah. Like this guy is just anyone that's ever met him was like that guy's cool. That that's Dylan. So opalstruth.com or opalstruth at gmail.com if anyone wants to get a hold of them. I just want to back up real quick and mention we are recording on the infamous Tazcam this evening. We had a scheduling conflict with Oscar Spector, um, so he's not here with all of his fancy schmancy recording equipment. Yeah, if there's anybody out there that's an audio engineer, we could probably use a backup audio guy. Yeah, think, yeah thanks a lot, Oscar. <laughs> Only backup. But, you know, as Oscar says, the show must go on, so here we are with the Tazcam, so sound quality isn't uh, necessarily guaranteed to be uh, crystal clear, but we're doing the best we can just to keep the shows consistent. Um, we are live streaming on Periscope uh, and Facebook Live. A lot of people have written us asking about what goes on when we record, how to record, what equipment do we use when we record, what are we drinking when we record, all sorts of crazy questions. So we figured let's live stream a podcast episode so we can kind of show behind the scenes. So that's what we're doing. Um, I may have to interrupt what I'm saying to answer somebody on one of the live streams, but just bear with us. It's the first night we're trying this. So let's talk about Dylan's reading, specifics about his reading, something that really stood out. We kind of touched on tires, schizophrenia, but uh, Dave and I both tried to get read, and we were in the hot seat, and it was just going to Joe and JoJo. Let's talk about... Where we were. We were in Joe Leary's house, north side of Chicago. What happened at that house? Uh, my wife's mother uh, died at the house. In the house? Yeah. Specifically in the basement? In the, you know, well, she, she fell and she died upstairs, but... Um, oh, I thought she fell down the stairs. She did, oh. but, but she died upstairs. I see. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to get into detail, but... Uh, when, when when she fell, something happened where she went up. You know, and she, she wound up dying upstairs. That's where she uh, she passed. And there was some. She lingered. She she hangs out downstairs though. Right, and you mentioned that a number yeah, of times in the I, past. Uh, yeah, she visits me. Um, she she's downstairs. That's where she is. Um, there was some. Question, and I know you don't want to get too... No, 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 no. It, it right, so extremely personal, but there were some lingering questions that... There was guys. finally closure to uh, the one biggest thing of what happened, and... Um, Could I... Yeah, you, yeah. So whether it was... It was... Um, um, they, they didn't know... It's, it, all right, it was an accident. All right, so the closure was it was an accident Got of it. how let's it just, happened. Let's just leave it And um, it was very comforting. Was she... Intoxicated at the time. I'm sure, maybe a little bit. Because Dylan did pick up on. Yeah. At first, he thought it was a drunk driving accident. Yeah. There was definitely liquor involved. Yeah, Someone she definitely um, had a drinking problem. Yeah, she did. Okay. Yeah. Why would he know? How could he know that? There's no way he did. Exactly. There's no way he did. Right. There, there's so much that he picked up on that it's like, I mean, you guys barely know about me, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's things he picked up on that I, that Joey, that, that nobody knows about, you know what I mean? It's like deep-rooted secret, things like it's like nobody would know about. Now, the... And he your mother, talked about the black box. I know what the black box was. Refresh your memory with the black box. I don't remember it's that. It's like, well, I don't know if I should open it up on the radio and blah, blah, blah. And I completely know. Do you remember that? Wasn't that Joey he was talking about? Yeah. I, I know what that is. And I'm not going to talk heart about heart it now. No, that's fine. But the secret what? in the heart of hearts? That was Joey he was talking yeah. about. 
Well, I don't remember black box. Well, he, he didn't know. So. He didn't know if he should open it up. Oh, okay. Open what up? Yeah, there was something with JoJo that Dylan oh. didn't want to talk about. Oh, and you don't want me to say it? Uh, I don't. No, I don't. Want to tell my dad? I, don't. Yeah, I mean, huh? maybe this is something you guys could discuss off. I mean, um, I don't off the like, podcast, and maybe huh? we can bring it up on another show if you guys both agree that it's okay to talk about. But Dylan did say when he was reading JoJo that there is. Your grandfather knows there's some deep-rooted secret in you, in your heart of hearts, that no one knows about, not even your dad and your grandfather, was encouraging you to tell your father about this deep-rooted secret, whatever that is. Uh-huh. And Dylan didn't want to say, he said he knew, but he didn't know, he wouldn't say, he refused to say what it was, just out of respect for you. Uh, maybe that's what you're talking about, Joe? Yeah. Okay. Um, schizophrenia, going back to your mother-in-law, Dylan specifically said, Schizophrenia. Me and Jojo mm-hmm. turned to each other. We're like, "Oh, he said schizophrenia." Yeah, yeah correct. Well, yeah, um, but not only with that. Getting back to my grandpa, um, he, I, I, there's things that I didn't know that when my mom listened to, she's like, he pointed to this side of his head or whatever it was, whatever side he said. That's what side your grandfather had the stroke on. It. Oh my I'm God, like, are what? You serious? And she's like. He t- and I know about like he even brought up uh, the baby that was uh, with her. That's right. And, and I was like, how? I'm like, I don't even know if Joe even knew that. Like, it's like I mean, yeah, who lost the baby? That was their the first baby they had. Your grandparents had. Yeah, uh, it was the lost baby. It was a it was a daughter. And um, there was like, what the, did your mom say when she heard that? She was just in shock. Like she was like, wow. I mean. Yeah, there, she's she's like, there's no way he would have known any of this stuff. You know. Wow, it's. I, I mean, uh, for a moment there. Do you know how many psychics or supposed psychics and you know people I've met in my life? <laughs> Probably countless. Yeah. Well, that's why I was so afraid to bring somebody in onto the show because I probably met about three people in my life that I've actually just been walking down the street or walking a, a shop or whatever, and it's like, okay, they know. You know what I mean? Just you know the people that know instantly. It's just that feel. It's like, okay, they have it. Wow. And he's one of them. You know, he has it. Yeah, I don't deny it. I don't doubt it. Dave, what do you think, I mean, as the Scully, the skeptic, hearing these, I mean, just just target hits, just these bullseyes? I don't know. I think you're all crazy. No, um, <laughs> I, I definitely think that there's... Um, you know, I've, I've, one of the things that I believe in the most of all of the stuff that we investigate is psychic abilities and psychic experience, and that's because I've experienced it myself. Um, my most infamous story is I was at home, this was like probably 1998, 1997, and I was at home watching television, and a cooking show came on. It was just this, like, really boring, like, Milwaukee looking dude with a mustache just like he looked like a not, just not, like a not, Bill, not Jeffrey Dahmer no it's just this guy that looked like a Bill Swirsky super fan and he was like oh this is my cooking show and he had his own like uh, he had some like barbecue sauce that like was sponsoring his little public access show and I for a second I thought oh well, you know I like to cook I'm a good cook at home and I like to use Casey Masterpiece barbecue sauce all the time like I wonder if I did a cooking show if Casey Masterpiece barbecue sauce would sponsor my show and then I'm like, I wonder who owns Casey Masterpiece Barbecue Sauce. And I'm like, this is a stupid idea. And I changed the channel, went to something else. And when Ben Stein's Money was on, remember the show that Jimmy Kimmel I, came I, I met him at an oasis out in uh, Lake Forest. Right. Ben Stein or I Jimmy Kimmel? Where you? No, Ben, ben Stein. Stein. I met Jesse White once. At, uh, I met him too. Yeah. He tumbled for us. Well, actually, his tumblers Jesse tumbled White for tumbled. us. Yeah. All right. At any rate, <laughs> yeah, no, I swear so, to you. I this is my story. This is so, so I'm watching Win Ben Stein's Money on, on Comedy Central, and I, wa- I would watch it all, like whenever I came across. It was a fun show to watch, so I watched it. The third question into the show, and I shit you not, was what company owns Casey Masterpiece Barbecue Sauce? And I'm like, all right, that one's way too fucking specific to dismiss. Like, there's no possible way in, in the like history of the universe, <laughs> yeah, in all the billions of possibilities of things you could think of, of running into that exact thing at that exact time, there's no possible 
way that that was a coincidence. Like that was way too specific. It was the exact same brand of barbecue sauce and the exact same question I asked my, like word for word, the same exact question I asked myself just a few minutes earlier. Turns out to be the Clorox company. Strangely enough, and that's why they asked the question because it was because it's a weird. What? It's a weird. Yeah, it's I, a I weird heard this story a million question. times, and I'm okay. still. Yeah, but so the listeners what? never heard it. So, so this is. I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain I've talked about it before on the show. Yeah. But the, the thing is that that was the one thing that like everything else I had ever experienced up to that point could have been dismissed as oh well it's just a, a wacky coincidence and like yeah sure it's probably something but it might just be a wacky coincidence but this was the one time where I was like okay. There is definitely something to this because there is no possible way that that could be a random series of events. Something there was a glitch in time or something that I was able to jump ahead of, like for whatever reason that ran into my brain right before it showed up. And I think it was a brand new episode too, so it wasn't even like I saw the episode before and had heard that question before. Because this was um. If you ever watch Comedy Central shows like At Midnight or these shows that they... No, just, they repeat and all that. No, no, but this is the thing. is like a lot of the shows on Comedy Central that they crank out weekly or daily. Like The Daily Show, for instance. Hey, they'll rerun it. They'll rerun it the following day. Yeah. But once the new episode airs, that episode is gone forever. Like unless there's like a break or something like that, okay. they almost never rerun hey, these Daily Baker. Shows. Um, we're, getting, we're getting people joining. Sorry. Hey, <laughs> hey Bailey. Hey, Baker. So... The thing is that that was the thing that convinced me. And, like, there has been tons of situations. Like, there was uh, – I was working my – in 2000, 2001, I had an outside sales job selling salon packages for a, Not marketing, a for a marketing company. No, it was this marketing company, and what they would do was kind of an ingenious idea that started in Canada. They would go to, to hair salons and spas and say, hey – um, we're going to put this coupon together that people pay like 50 bucks for and they get like a free haircut and then they can come back and get a manicure and then they can come back and get a facial and they can come back and get this thing or that thing. So they come back for three or four visits for 50 bucks. Go to the just and, going to and, and what it would be is you would sell random strangers like in a mall or you walk into a business and sell these coupons to people who would buy them for 50 bucks and it'd be a referral fee. So the company that I worked for got to keep all the money and the coupon was able to be redeemed at the salon. It was a referral fee. You get the customer to come back three or four times and then hopefully they use that salon forever. So I was selling these things and we would go on these road trips to other places around the Midwest. I was in Minnesota in the Mall of America, walking around the Mall of America. And previously, my previous job was I worked at Pet Care, which is what Petco bought out in this basically one of the original pet superstores in the Chicagoland area. And there was a guy named Roger that I worked with who was the resident ferritologist or whatever. And you know how, like, every once in a while you'll just think of somebody that you – and it surprises you you're even thinking oh, of him because you're like – Two days ago, why, why, why do I have a dream about this guy? And then you meet him two, right, right. two days And the later. thing is yeah. that it's like you think of these people like a kid from high school that you didn't even really ever talk to. And you're like, why the fuck am I thinking exactly. of that guy? Like, I, like, and you're like, you're like, I haven't even thought of that guy in ten mm-hmm. years. Like, I haven't – I just remembered he existed right now. So – I'm thinking of this guy, I'm walking around the Mall of America in Minnesota, hundreds of miles away from where I worked with him. And I'm like, hey, I wonder what ever happened to Roger, that ferret guy. And I shit you not, two minutes later, who walks past me in the Mall of America but fucking Roger. And I'm like, hey, whoa, whoa, wait, what? You, what? And it was like this crazy, like, like there's like how no, that, how could I have possibly, like, how could that have That, that happened? happens to me all the time. I'll dream of the people like that I like it's like I might have seen them like 15 years ago right all of a sudden like a week later they're dead eh? like somebody's like you, you remember this guy from a long time ago I'm like yeah I just tell, he, he just died you yeah. know I know what you're talking about but it's tell, like, tell him that story there's... about when you were a kid and you were looking at the power plant oh yeah the, I, I still that's even, crazy I still don't even know if this is a real real thing that happened or not because I can't get my <laughs> pa- I can't get like anyone in my family to like confirm whether it actually ever happened but I'm at this beach in Zion Illinois I was probably like seven or eight years old and we are I'm looking I'm facing I have my back to the lake looking west and there's this like refinery like this big factory refinery thing it has like all these towers I know, I know you're about. and like like you know there's towers and there's these big smokestacks and stuff and i'm looking at it and i'm thinking 
What if that thing exploded right now? And then just... <coughs> like just these giant fireballs erupting out of this thing. And then these sirens go off and they evacuate the beach and stuff. And I remember seeing it on the news that night and smoke billowing and everything. And to this day, I'm still like, did I do that with my brain? Maybe and that it, was in another time. Well, no. Well, it, it, but, it, well, this, but this is the thing. is like all of this, all of this, rather than thinking that I'm psychic and I can see the future, I... Could you it, also do it? No, no. But this all goes back to my theory about time not being real. Like t- the time is the way we experience linear time from point A to point B is not a legitimate thing. That it's... We are basically functioning in an altered reality that we've created in our own brains to make everything make sense. But in reality, everything's happening at once. And just the way that we sort it out is our brain puts it into this chronological order. So is it is it possible that there's these little glitches in the, in the matrix, if you will, where we jump ahead a couple of steps and we can see things that have happened or, or are technically happening at the same time? Um, and it's basically just our brain kind of stepping out of well, our construct for a minute or two. Personally, I, I think that it's just we have the ability to tap in these different um, dimensions, you know, and we not only could feel and see the past, we could see and feel the future. And it's almost kind of what you're saying, but we're just in this physical world right now of this dimension. Did you ever see that terrible Nicolas Cage movie? I forget what it was, what it was called, but it was he could see the future. Like, he could see two minutes into the future. Uh, so every, like, in, in every scene, he would he would see all the different possibilities in his brain. Oh, I, before he, like, no, no, different not, not, not Donnie Darko. Darko. No, 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 it was the same shit, though, though, man. It was a Nicolas Cage movie. But I'll around. tell it, dude, I'll tell you this. I remember, I, it, the, the boat blew up like the yeah, yeah. blew up and, and I, I, I when I was little it's like I knew it's my like somebody's I, I, like shouting yeah. right now yeah. no I, I all right, so like when I was little I knew my past lives I, I I've, I've seen people that I used to be okay um I I mean dude I I, I would have reoccurring dreams of like shit that like normal kids don't dream about when they're two years old that I remember of like a big power plant uh, exploding and in, and in, like with a nuclear reaction like, like uh, Dave's? Huh? Like Dave's? No, but this is like an Egypt and shit. I mean just like weird fucking crazy shit that normal kids would never dream or think or know about, you right. know? Um, kind of like when, uh, when the little girl, um, Dee Dee <clears throat> that we were talking to a few episodes back Said that yeah, thing yeah, about the can. said that thing about the, the the bad guy killing the girl and the boy and the pumpkin, and the patch, pumpkin patch. Yeah, and the yeah, yeah it's like whoa, yeah. yeah. But oh, Dave, when you were little, did you were your abilities just skyrocketed? It, I feel like it was it was like for a couple. But months, you didn't know it was uh, it was for a couple months once a year. I would it would it would accelerate. Like it was almost like a seasonal reaction. Or That's something. how I feel now, and I, I've always felt that my whole life. It's it, it, it breaks and you know it's it, it's all in spurts. Um, when I was younger, it was just ridiculous because I didn't know any better, and no one. Uh, that's just how I, went I don't. With the flow. I don't. I don't get it so much anymore. But I do have deja vu a lot, where I have deja vu within my deja vu of remembering the deja vu. Yeah. It's like this inception yeah. level thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Like, I remember, remember, remembering this. Well, it's like the the man who falls asleep and dreams he's a butterfly, and within that dream, the butterfly falls asleep and dreams it's <laughs> yeah, a man yeah, yeah. who's dreaming, who's <laughs> you know, who's not. I, I was always very. Very intuitive and into all this, like when when I was younger. What's up? And for a while, though, um, there was a break in everything where I just didn't feel. It was almost like some people like it say it's like a reawakening. You know, it's and I wonder if that's what it is. But now all of a sudden it's fucking skyrocketing. I'll put it to to you this way: it's like when you're into a hobby or something, you like you comic books or something, and then for whatever reason, for a couple months, you're just like, I don't really want to deal with that anymore, Mm -hmm. and you just like step away for a while, and then like all of a sudden you're back into it. For those just joining us on Periscope, we are uh, doing an impromptu podcast recording, our 38th episode of the SOS Dash Radio podcast. Um, a lot of people ask us what goes on behind the scenes. We figured to throw it on Periscope. We're also on Facebook Live. This isn't our full setup this evening. Our producer wasn't available. 
uh, but we release every two weeks on Monday, so we have to keep the show rolling. We're using the infamous Tascam recorder. There it is, guys, for those live uh, streaming with us. Um, so we're recording on the Tascam to keep the show rolling. Ask any questions you would like, and we will uh, answer them live on the podcast. And I'll mention your screen name and your question, and you could be heard uh, by thousands and thousands of listeners. So uh, ask away. Or at least dozens. No, it's, <laughs> it's thousands. Trust me. Uh, or, or is it millions? Uh, one day. One day. So we're, we're recapping episode 37, where we had um, renowned psychic Dylan Bell on our podcast. And now that we've had two weeks to kind of decompress and analyze what happened during that episode, we're, we're rehashing it. Later on this evening, we are going to venture out. We're going to drive north of Chicago and head into Kenosha, Wisconsin, just over the border. And we're going to try to find... Uh, completely cold, try to find a haunted location and, and see what it's about, not knowing anything about uh, where we're headed. So with that said, let's continue the conversation about Dylan. All right, well, so there is, speaking about, you know, not just feeling and, you know, knowing the past, what I think another thing that we do is we feel the future. And, it, for, and this is a good example uh, that my, sounds like a slogan for some terrible company. Like, we, we feel know, the future. We feel, ooh, uh, <laughs> and, it, and it feels like 12 inches. Oh. Okay, <laughs> so. There it is. <laughs> I'm going to throw it in there. Okay, the show is finally on its way. All right, so um, my whole life, I always, like at my parents' house, my, my sister's old bedroom, man. It's a peaceful fucking little, sorry, it's a little, a little girl's bedroom, you know? Like, there's nothing bad, nothing... It's a peaceful place, you know? It's, it's a little girl's bedroom. Like, nothing ever bad happened, you know? So, but we always had a, a feel, like, that it's like there's a spirit there or something, like, something happened, that's where the heart is. And like, nothing ever did happen. No. It, it was my sister's bedroom. But now, just to speed it up, flash forward... Okay. How many years? My grandpa got sick. Right. He, they didn't want to put him in a nursing home. That was the only place where they could put him, just randomly. We would never in a million years think that that's where my grandpa would be. Um, you know, like, and, and, and the funny thing is it's like pink, like, sponge painting all over, and, you know. But, um, but yeah, that's where my grandpa pretty much, you know, lived before he passed. And uh, were we picking up on the future the whole time? This is what I always wonder is like, is the stuff that we're feeling. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Is it our energy from the future visiting us back in time? Wow. Like, I I actually wrote, um, right after we started doing this, I actually, I was, you know, I'm a a writer and artist and whatnot. I never have time to do it. And motto. But I wrote wrote a story about basically the character was me and realized that if he killed himself and became energy, he could actually transcend time, come back in time and communicate with his former self and warn his former self of things that were going to happen. And he's able to go back in time and basically correct all the mistakes he made in his life to perfect his life, bring his his parents back to life, get his brother out of drugs and all this stuff. And then he realizes, oh, well, now... Now I have to do this to, like, to fix other things. And he sees a terrible bus accident where a bus gets hit by a train. So he goes back in time, warns his former self of this thing happening. He's able to stop traffic and keep the bus from being in the wrong place at the wrong time. He's able to snap back into his reality. And every time he snaps back into his own reality... Thank you for the question, Hazardous. Whenever he snaps back into his own new reality, like he's, all the memories of his past realities fade. So he has to keep a journal of everything. And eventually he starts to forget everything. But then he remembers he has this ability and is able to continue to like basically kill himself, go back in time and make his former living self fix things in the future before they happen, and then bring himself back to life essentially by altering the timeline and realizes at a certain point that this is what angels are. I would go see that movie. But let's pause. We had a question. Tulsa Nation, what's up? Welcome to SOS Dash Radio Live Podcast Recording. We had a question come in from Hazardous and Hazardous, I'm trying to remember, as you know, these questions will fade after a few seconds, but uh, Hazardous wanted to know, have we ever, hey Tulsa, um, has, have we ever witnessed or seen death and then 
one step further, actually spoken to or interacted with uh, a dead person. Yeah, um, a lot of times. And uh, I've never, I've what, never actually witnessed anyone die. Honestly, I've never even seen a dead body outside of a funeral. You know, like yeah, I, I, I've never seen any anyone pass. But uh, the thing is with um, in all right. So basically. Uh, when I was younger, I could, uh, whenever I saw a dead person in my dream, I knew, I'm like, okay, I'm not, I, I'm dreaming, but I'm in an alternate state. And I, I, I had to go on like a half an hour about it, right. to my, my theory. But it, it took me a long time where I could speak to them, but they couldn't speak to me. But, it, but they, whenever I'd ask them questions or talk to them, it would, they, they couldn't speak, but they would tell me through their eyes, and I could see it through their eyes, and it would just, and I know what they mean. Then over time, getting stronger and stronger, they could speak to me, but I couldn't speak back. And be, I could kind of, but it'd be, uh, I'm trying to push everything out. But the, and and you know, but they knew what I'm saying. And now, it's when I, when I see you know a dream or whatever of someone that's dead. It's, I'm like, whoa, you're, what are you doing? Like, you're dead. And they're like, they almost look at me like, wow, like, you know, and you can speak to me. And we could just talk no problem at all. And um, I just, I think I've reached that level now of, yeah, it's... Um, I'm thinking I'm thinking of an instance about communicating with the dead at uh, Robinson Woods Indian Burial Ground, northwest, wide, north, northwest side of Chicago, a uh, very notoriously haunted uh, burial site. Um, we were there one evening and wound up communicating. Dave, I think you were there for this one. Wound up communicating with that light in the middle of the woods. We I, would, I, I, we remember you guys, it, yeah. I remember you telling me about it, but I was not you there. You weren't there that time. We would tell it, okay, we'd see it flash in these deep, deep woods. No residential areas behind it, no streets. It's it's just Cook County Forest. I remember that. We, at first we thought it was a headlight, but there was yeah. no. Yeah. So we'd see it flash, and then we'd say, okay, flash again. And sure enough, it would flash again. Okay, flash twice. And then it would move to a completely different area of the woods, and boom, boom, flash twice. I think we got it up to like five times it would actually flash uh, to our command, so Did it ever go that was a form of communication because mm-hmm. the Indian, the, the Native Americans actually used to use fire and light uh, to communicate through the woods at night while they were hunting. Did yeah. it ever make the pattern? Do 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 do. No, no. I, I just want to say, like, like, hazardous. Thank you for the question. I would say that uh, there has been instances where we we communicated at some level with well, the no, energy. Of course, there was Maureen's house where yeah. I talked to Ruth as well. Oh, this is true. Where I learned... And you talked about and, that on the and, bonus and, episode. And Jojo was actually with us uh, right next to me when it was happening, so he was a witness to it. Yeah. It's not like the movie show where it's just nonstop chatter and communication. It, it, it just isn't like this. We've been doing this for 20 years. Yeah. We know when it's, it's like trying because it's like, we feel it in our body... But when it's actually communicating, communicating with them, where you speak to them, like, it's when like you see them, uh, all right. We, we're, it's like trying to communicate with a really smart horse. You know? All right. It's what, like uh, tap uh, one for no, tap two yeah, right. for yes. Good all right. Word. So basically, there's so much different dimensions. Um, the dead are here, okay, and we're here. When we go to sleep and dream... Uh, our bodies relaxed and our soul drifts off over here. The ghosts or spirits, they could actually venture off in that other realm. And this is where we can, we can communicate. And it takes a while to get there, but it happens. And the, the problem this with, is where... The problem with communicating at that level when you're, when you're in a subconscious... Or at least I have. When you're in a subconscious state of mind is like, it's, it's all... It's mumbo, almost like meditating. It's all, it's all mumbo-jumbo. It, like it could I, be I your can't mind, meditate because my brain's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my medi- I can't meditate either. Yeah. I'm the same. I'm too loud our, enough. Yeah. Yeah. And my I form of meditating that. is sleeping. And that's... Because even when I'm sleeping, I'm not, I'm not sleeping. Yeah. And I'm, I'm always, I wake up like this, but that's why it's like when you drift up that realm, uh, you guys meet kind of halfway, and that's where you know people like us could you know. Well, and you guys should meditate for that reason, not not meditate because of that reason, because meditating is going to help clear your mind. So, has this again? Thank you for the question. I hope we we answered for you. Um, that this is cool. I like this periscope thing. It's the first time we're using periscope, so we're just kind of seeing how it goes. Jojo, you were saying? No, I was just saying. Um, 
the chattering in your mind, you should not not meditate because of that reason. You should meditate because of that reason because it's going to help out a lot. And I know you're not as psychic as my dad or Dave, but I do feel like once you meditate and open up yourself a little bit more, like me, for instance, I started meditating and opened myself up a lot more. Well, and coming around here, like the podcast and stuff that helped me open up more. I don't know, meditating, it's awesome. It'll help you open up a lot. Yeah, a lot of people have said I should meditate, but... I just I'm really have trying to work on levitating myself. Well, and, and, but Jay, this is, this is another thing, too, I think about maybe, like, us in a way. I think we're very much a lot similar. And uh, I think that it's almost you distract to not give it. it like, or, like, and take it, in a way, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know. But you know what I mean? You, you, you don't give it a chance to get in uh, to, or to feel it because it just... Um, not uh, it was Alex. Not not uh, so right. So to bring it back through to mm-hmm. Chase, right? The experience mm-hmm. of Chase. I mean, <laughs> Dylan. He also brought two partners, Alex. Chase and Alex. And and I felt right. he was so a lot with you know, which he, one? Chase or Alex. Alex. He was kind of almost like both, like in like a different state. So Alex was the one that did the the, drawing, the yeah. psychic kind and, of drawing, um, the yeah, poems, and the poems. Mm-hmm. I forgot what he called. What he and, called and his craft, his, like, his drawing that he did was of an owl and a bat. That's right. Um, in a campfire, and I had just come back from Florida, where we had seen owls, bats, and had a campfire. Wow. Uh, How come you didn't mention it? I did mention it. Oh, you did. Okay. Out in the Everglades, we actually caught some fish and we made a campfire and we cooked our fish over the campfire. And like, I didn't mention any of that to him. I mean. Granted, like, wow. you know, a campfire and an owl and a bat are common woodland themes. It's not like, you know, completely out of the ordinary that he would... Yeah, but the weird thing is, though, that, but, but the poem kind of, like, it's like, I guess I can kind of relate to that poem, squirrel too. Squirrel one but, just joined. Hey, squirrel. I feel like his you know. poems were were kind of, like, open enough to interpretation that they... Yeah. I didn't really read a whole lot into the poem. Yeah, but, 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 but there we go. This, 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 it's, like, it's like a fortune cookie for hey, Here's, here's a group of guys from Chicago recording in Chicago. The last thing you would think of is woodland stuff, I would think. Well... But then there you were, like, the outdoorist of the group... Yeah. ...sitting amongst us. So I don't know. There might have been yeah, something I, I, all right. This is they weren't as, they weren't as impactful as Dylan. The the poem was cool. It kind of I think the second but part. Alex of the poem, brought up a really cool point what's too, that? and I was like, shit, I never thought about that. When I was a kid, I get fucking tormented by all these spirits. Just like I'd wake up and I, I'm like, oh, and I turn sideways because I want to not uh, you know get them in. And he's he's like, yeah. When you lay on your back, thank you for the hearts, guys. <laughs> when when you lay on your back when you're sleeping, you're 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 taking everything in because they feed off you when you sleep. They're trying to push it in your head, but when you turn sideways, it's like you sh- you shut them away, and it's like it blocks in. And I think it's all about that third eye, you know, of like how you could relate with the the, the spirits or and, and you go back and forth with them. Um, and I was like, shit, you know what? Maybe that's why when I was younger, like whenever I wanted to be left alone and like I felt something's by me or this and that, I turn sideways and I'd be like, okay, and I co- always cover my head. Just like me and you always sleep with, you know, a our beanie over our eyes, you know? But I could still, I mean, spirits still come to me when I'm sideways, but when I'm open, like like I'm well, laying on my back, I'm like it's just it's a feeding ground where every I, I, like they're coming to me, you know. Yeah. And I I, I want to get in more depth with that and look, you know, actually look into it because I think there is there might be some truth with that, you know, of how you sleep and you know how I mean if you, if you're intuitive, I mean and it, it's okay. It's it's almost like. You're hitchhiking on a side of road with your fucking thumb out. Hey, I'm looking for a ride. If you're sleeping on your back, you know, it's like, it's almost like, okay. Open for business. Yeah. It's like, so you, know, you need some dreams. In a, in a frat house. Yeah. But, hey, why is Dave always sleeps with his mouth open? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Move on to the next question. Hey, it's right, I'm going to go off my live feed here. I'm going to go off my live feed here on Facebook because there's, I don't think 
to have any viewers. Um, no action on Facebook, but we're so, getting action on Periscope. But uh, we'll, when Thank we you do the live investigation, we'll come back. Yeah, tonight after recapping Dylan Bell and listening to a little <laughs> bit of music, uh, we are going to go head north and check out a town completely cold and see if we could track down a haunted location and figure out what's going on with it based on the feelings and impressions the two Claire sensitives uh, of our group, Dave Black and Joe Erie, pick up. So we're going to make sure and uh, do that here very shortly. Guys, is there anything else you would add about uh, Dylan Bell? Top notch, A+. plus. He's a very nice boy. He's very <laughs> nice. And it, you guys uh, own the same uh, dress shirts. Yeah, yeah. Yes. apparently we had a psychic connection that day yes. when we wore the same. Yes. But I wore a shirt that he had. Do you uh, mind if we play a song for him? Listeners, once again, opalstruth.com for Dylan Bell or opalstruth at gmail.com. Thanks again, Dylan. Um, I'm thinking we should let JoJo pick the music for this episode. JoJo, would you like to do that? I think the last time you've picked for this episode, uh, it's been like sometime in the summer. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? Um, Hell Spells by ACDC. Hell's Bells? Yeah. Oh, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Well, let's hey. listen to JoJo. ACDC. Ow! Nice, nice choice, JoJo. So we are, uh, so, yeah, to our, our, to our listeners, it seemed like it was only 30 seconds, but it's been over an hour. Uh, yeah, I'm trip, talking about politics. Trip yeah. in the car, talking about politics. Yes, JoJo. We are on now our guys in the back seat. Joe, Ari, and JoJo are in the back seat. Gonna have to talk louder. And I am in the front seat and because Dave. I get car sick. Yeah, like, uh oh, and I'm in the back. Hey, boys. So we, uh,. <laughs> 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 I guess that sounded weird. Eh? That did sound strange. So we're on the test like cam. We drove to Kenosha, Wisconsin, just over the border uh, of Illinois. And, you know, Kenosha, Wisconsin, it settled in 1850, guys. Uh, the Native Americans called it Kenosia, which was a place of the pike, is what it stood for. It's an old town settled like, by... Uh, pike in the sense of fish? Yes. Okay. Oh, I think, I think you said pike. Not pipe. Like pipe smokers. Uh, so, so, 1850, place of the pipe, Kenosia, uh, um, mostly settled by uh, Italian and German. So there's a heavy Italian influence here, Joe Erie, you might be happy to find. Yeah, yes, because I am an Italian and German. And, um, yeah, so we, we went cold. I'm sort of uncomfortable with both of those. Stop with the noises. Um, but yeah, so, so we're, we're going to go to your idea, Dave. All right, well, what I want to do is get, like, I know, like, the, the downtown or the oldest region of Kenosha is along the lake, because that's where they brought right, in all the goods the and western stuff. side of Lake so Michigan. So we yeah. are going to go over to, the, to the, the area right along the lake there, and me and Joe, it's already almost 2 in the morning now, so me and Joe are just going to kind of walk around and no, feel, Joe and I. feel things out and see if we can pinpoint a nice haunting um, in that area. And then um, we'll, we'll see what we feel, and we'll talk about it for a few minutes. And then we will have you, Jay, tomorrow either call or stop into the place and ask them some questions and find out if the place is haunted and if it's known to be haunted. But me and Joe are confident enough in our abilities that we can walk around pretty much any old area and find a place that's haunted. So we're going to do that live on the show right now. Joe, what do you think of that? Hell yeah. So we're kind of putting your abilities to the test, right? We're going to see what we can find without knowing too much about the area. Um, besides what we looked up on the way, um, we're going to see what we can find. Jojo, what do you think? I think it's going to be fun to see if they can actually uh, find a place that's haunted. I mean, it's happened in the past, but... Wait, what? 
<laughs> What's your time, Alpha? All right, so we're heading, I can't wait. Uh, we're probably five, six minutes from the lakefront, and uh, then we'll start perusing the downtown area. Hopefully, not looking too suspicious, get arrested, but hey. Let please. me say one thing really quick. Well, is that a skunk? skunk? Yeah, why does it smell like skunk? <laughs> no, dude? smoke the weed, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. All right, so we just passed the old Kenosha tap there. Yeah. I don't know. I got a vibe off. Of I've been. No, oh, so, that's why I said. I'm just. I wanted, I'm throwing this out there. Is when we get we, when we got in uh, Kenosha. I'm getting a really old vibe like, where there's a lot of history and a lot of energy up here. Well, I know I, sure. I have family up here, right here to our left. Um, mm-hmm. That used to be the old Chrysler plant. This mm-hmm. whole massive, I don't know how many acres that is. That was the old Chrysler plant. Chrysler was a huge uh, industry here before Chrysler was AMC, American Motor Corporation. So a lot of they made the Gremlin. Yeah, that's right, the Gremlin. They made like a lot North of and and they used to park those cars right on this land here. But uh, since the auto industry moved out, a lot of Kenosha is uh, kind of economically depressed. You have the haves and have-nots here. There's really no in between. But uh, we'll see what happens. We'll we'll pick it up when we can. Oh, Jockey, we're passing Jockey. This is Jockey Underwear's uh, world headquarters. I like through right here on the left. <laughs> so uh, yeah, with that said, they have a bigger I like the graves. The graves. We will uh, pick this up when we get to the downtown area. So just want to let the listeners know what we're up to. We're on the hunt. All right, we're back. We are in downtown Kenosha, right off of 57th Street. Uh, I'm not sure of the side street we're on, but we pulled up to the Heritage House Inn, which is a huge abandoned structure um, in downtown Kenosha. And immediately, Dave Black, Joe Erie, and JoJo Erie all said, no, bad. <laughs> uh, I don't like it. There's a, I, I look instantly when I see it, I feel fire. I feel fucking orphans. Um, it's just sad, a lot of sadness. Well, a lot let's, of depression. let's get out of the car and uh, go see what this is all about. The Heritage House Inn in downtown Kenosha. I don't know what street but it's off of 57th Street, right across the street from the, I don't know, ice cream parlor, I guess. But it's not a good, it's a sad feel. It's a very sad feel. If someone could, t- yeah, Dave Black is taking pictures. I'll make sure to post the pictures on our website, sos-radio.com. Whatever this is, I, so, something something happened. I, 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 I'm getting instantly in my head like a, like a, like a fire or so, something happened here where there, there was a disaster. Well, um, you heard that? Did you hear that? We're already hearing things. JoJo. No, there's probably people up there. It, it's like water dripping. It, no, it sounds like someone threw a rock. No, it's right. Water dripping. Water dripping. Yeah. Ah, water dripping. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Debunked. No, it's just it's it's a, it's a very sad feel. Some. <sighs> You guys got to see this place. I'm, I'm, it's I'm very I'm, I'm, ominous. I'm feeling like orphans, though. Like you're like so, something with. Well, when we get sadness. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me run over to Dave. Uh, running over to Dave. <laughs> Go ahead. What are you We're getting like really extreme over here. It's like it's like oh. level nine, level nine. Like well, let's walk red up. Alert. So. Come on, let's walk up. Yeah, they might find me. Oh man, that's that's really intense. Oh. Oh. Come on, guys. What are you oh, dude, it is bad. It's in my spine, oh, dude. Yeah. It, it is in my spine. My man. eyes are tearing up. Dave's taking a lot of pictures. We'll put them up on the website. Oh. It's right where the water's dripping, too. Then. So, obviously, when we get back in the car, we could Google this place and see if there's anything we could find out about it. Oh. Windows boarded up. No, it, it's it's a, that was a strong spot. It was it, it it definitely was in my spine, dude. My whole body. Well, there's a blanket there. there. There's sad. There's sadness here. It's not happy. It's bad. I want to know what happened here. Dave's Dave's freaking out over here. Hopefully the Tascam audio is okay. 
What do you feel? What's going on? Man, I, I feel area. like I, I'm over, like, the, yeah, the, 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 front, the front steps over there are definitely, yeah, like, where it is. at the base of the steps, I felt it stronger than I did up on the steps, but. It's not. The it's, 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 now, there's a hole in the window here. Could you shine your flashlight of your camera in there and see what you see? Let us know what you see. Uh, That's fine. Mm-hmm. If the cops come, we'll ask them what's the story with this place. Can't really get in there. So Dave's taking pictures inside the hole in this boarded up window, first floor. Um, Could you turn the flashlight on your camera and just kind of peer in there? Heritage House Inn is what it's called. But let's go back to where Dave felt it, you know, at the beginning. It's not over here so much. Let's go over the... All right. Dave, what do you feel here? Broken glass everywhere. Oh my god, I see a lot of stuff. What do you see, Julia? Holy! What do you see? Tell me what you see. Jesus, Tell me what you see. Oh, well, I saw a chair. There was a lot of broken stuff. No, no, no. Stick your phone in sideways. Yeah, watch you. Now, hopefully, the phones phone. aren't screwing with the Taz cam. I'm not feeling anything here. Though. Oh, oh, I see it. Is it under construction in there? Oh, definitely no. It's in a van. Dave sticking his phone yeah, into the door and taking photos. Hopefully something doesn't grab it from the other side. Steal my phone. Stick it in more. <laughs> <laughs> my feeling went away here, though. Oh, yeah, I know. It's definitely more. Do you, do you not, I don't feel shit right now. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting any truck passing by. But so the right side of the building, this is where it is. the west side of the building, no feelings. Now we're headed to the south. This would be south. No, the lake is right there. Well, Heritage House Inn. We're trying to go. Dave, Dave, these steps. Talk louder, guys. Yeah, I got it over there. Dude, it's, 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 it's like right here in the middle of stuff. Take a picture of Joe. It's over here. It's over here. It's over here. Oh. I'm so freaky, man. Right when you get to the steps. Oh. Yeah, this place is weird. Dude. Like, this looks like it could have been like a, it like a, a big sitting room it's of some now. kind. It, was, it came to me. Dude, it, it was over there. Fuck it. it it's Wait, over just, here. Let's just walk around and see what's it, in that. It, it came to me, and it was. It's in the middle of those steps over there. Uh, never mind. I thought it was like. I'm not. It's going away. It's going away. Well, let's just. Whoa. Oh, you stuck on that. Dude, I'm getting freaked right now. On those steps, something. Well, we'll go back. We'll go back. This reminds me of a spot in Joliet. What spot in Joliet? The, uh, around the um, train station that I, w- I talked about a few episodes. Oh, I think that was one of our bonus episodes, yeah. There was a barrel back here with God knows what in them. <coughs> You're going to have to come here during the day and get some daytime pictures. Absolutely. Oh, I feel this like, I feel like in my stomach there, there's something going on with Wait, like no, the... No, 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 no. There's a train yard somewhere around here. So you hear freight trains in the background. I'm not feeling nothing. That's all right. We'll go back around. Well, someone broke into there. Oh, man. Yep, someone else broke into there. Like, Dude, that, I feel like... I feel like someone's watching us from those windows. No, there's not. There might be squatters. Why would you think there's people in there, Jojo? Because you see how, like... Well, I mean, if you go to the one side of the... Uh, well, different sides. You look in through the windows, you see graffiti or stuff busted up. Well, let's look at... Let's watch these windows for a minute. Look at there's still, like, curtains up there. I don't know. I just get the feeling like someone's watching us from those windows. I mean, to tell you the truth, I mean, there could be people out there... I mean, I can climb up there right now, no. but it's, it's it's cold. I'm not I'm not feeling anything spiritually. Hey, should we ask these people? Dave's gonna ask these kids. I bet. Dave's 
yelling at kids, trying to get them to stop, and they're terrified. Stay back. Just stay behind us. Here, hold this for a second. Oh, God. Did you guys care to be on a, a radio show or no? Okay, cool. Go ahead, Jay. So what are your names? My name's Mikey. I'm a dishwasher. What's up? <laughs> I'm Josh. Dishwasher. Dishwasher. You, kind of, you guys are like kind of like Jay and Jay. Jay. With, no, with no silent Bob. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> um, so let's, let's ask him some questions. Yeah, I guys got you on T right here. I was pushing ghost stars or some shit. Yeah, yeah, we're a paranormal podcast out of Chicago. Uh, right. com. I wouldn't say that this place would have been haunted, though. This place is just fucking in box, box, doors down. Place, like, if I would specifically actually try and ghost hunt something, kept the same my best bet. But you got to get, like, you know, provisions on the inside. I've done the Ouija board on the outside of the Kemper Center and gotten some fucked up shit from a little boy telling me that he drowned in the lake. That's he was right. trying me to get oh, me wow. to go swimming. He didn't get the name. And then there was another spirit that was telling me his name was Jimmy. He was trying to get me to enter the building by picking a lock. And he was very specific about that, too. Like, he knew how to, like, get into the building. And then we'd go smelling it out on the Ouija board, which was crazy. Wow. Other than that. Uh, so what they're referring I don't know about to is, you, but when, like, they're when referring to the Kemper Center that's about... I don't know, maybe a mile or two south. Quarter or mile south. Quarter mile. Okay. Southeast, actually. Right on the lake. We're going to check that out next. Right. You guys got a Ouija board with you, right? No. <laughs> oh, man. You guys Not are laughing. <laughs> so, what is so you, said you, you said you had a story about this place, right? Well, uh, I'm not too familiar with about the history about this place, uh, but... Uh, I had a buddy of mine who actually used to work over here at, uh, over there at Mike's Chicken and Donuts. And when you go out to smoke, you actually face this way. Um, and he was telling me, actually, seen him on his break. And he told me that he's seen a large group of people gathered out here like they were exiting the building. Huh. And, of course, this place has been boarded up for years. So uh, as I'm listening to this, he swears on everything that people were leaving like large amount let's say 30 to 40 people were exiting this building wow. have no idea did he see like doors with them coming out or just coming down the steps or what i couldn't recall that's that's all i got for that though but wow. still after that that is i don't so, know freaked me out a little what bit. do you know about this place I heard something, you said something about a gentleman's club? A gentleman's club, yes. Within the early 80s, I was supposed. Oh. Late 90s, I think it was actually shut down. But later 2000s, it ended up getting destroyed by the homeless population. And now it's basically just sitting on an exhibit. I don't even call it an exhibit. More of it's like a skate spot for me nowadays. Joe, okay. Can you show me anything? Can I try a trick on your board? <laughs> Dude, what, 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 if you what, want, careful. What, 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 oh, yeah. What is your balloon? Yo, know, this is called, you know, so I'll, I'll try it. H no, on no, the no, periodic no, table, no, some helium. No, that's hydrogen. Never mind. That's never mind. Joe, <laughs> Joe, Joe Murray's going to try an impromptu jam. He's going to try breaking his ankle because he's too old for this. Please, I don't have insurance on that. Like, I don't have insurance at all in Wisconsin. So. You know, your father used to be sponsored. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you never know what you're gonna have, what you're gonna get on the SOS Dash Radio podcast. Yeah, we're doing, we're literally conducting an interview in the middle of the street while Joe skateboards at like two in the morning. We just got No, it'll be on Monday. If you go to the website that's on that card, you'll be able to hear this interview sometime on Monday. Yeah, you're gonna hear you censor out a lot. No, we don't censor. Oh, okay. So whatever you want. But by the way, with this heritage house, I. You know, I can't say that there would not be any spiritual activity. It doesn't hurt because, you know, you know, when you tamper with things that, you know, usually shouldn't exist, they tend to pop up. You know, you don't expect. You could be down at the lake just hanging out with the Ouija board like I was, and you get some random encounters that you wouldn't expect to do. That's crazy. Anywhere spirits can find a way to, you know, hunker themselves down to have like a... If you, if you think about the history of a place like this that's been around since 1850, established in 1850, like, I mean, probably within a 200 feet of any place you're standing, somebody has died yeah, at I mean, some point. Some dude lost his virginity, so, you know, he dies, he wants to go back to the place, he lost his virginity, so he's roaming around looking yeah, for that chick in the Victorian that. dress. I just, next, you know, they're like... Up there, like, watching. Like, 
he can actually uh, Facebook has a lot of pictures that have popped up the inside of this place. I don't know how they're getting in. But uh, recently I've seen uh, kids, just regular kids trying to break into it. Um, I've seen a patrol officer actually uh, enter that building not too long ago. I'd say a good, I wonder what he's looking for. Good month. Actually, she. Well, I mean, there's, there's she, windows she, on the other side that are, like, wide open. So if somebody had a ladder or threw a rope up there or whatever, they could get in there. Okay. I've always wondered, actually, what the inside of this you, place looks actually, like. Actually, if you walk up to this door, you can actually get your cell phone, like, through the little slit. And you can take pictures inside the door. Huh. And there's, there's some, uh, yeah, there's some creepy looking stuff in there. So, uh... You guys are local? Yes. Local to Kenosha? Yep, born and raised. Know any other locations that we would stop by, check out from the outside? And Because uh, these guys... I can tell Vlad you bought your hat at a gas station because I'm the same. And Joe Beery. Actually, that's all him right there. They could feel these energies that are associated with hauntings. They don't talk to dead people, but they feel that energy with yeah. the haunting, and they can tell when it's around. As soon as we drove past this place, we're like, stop, you got to stop. So we jumped out, and sure enough... On that staircase, that south staircase there, it was super intense. There was something oozing out of that area of the building. And I keep... Did you hear that? Yeah. I'm telling you, there's something... There's something in there. There's so, Someone's watching Wait, us. We heard the water dripping. Like, I, I called it out as water dripping. But when we walked up there, we didn't see any water dripping. Have you guys tried to provoke anything? No. No, not yet. I can. I'm pretty good at that. You know. I can. Just you guys like, oh, I can quick. start jumping. Around. I can start. I, if I start jumping around and screaming, shit will come out. Like it will be around. The five O. I mean, you know, <laughs> they do feed off of anger and all type of negative energy as well. That's why poltergeists have like the rare occurrence of being able to terrorize families. Um. Uh, I don't know, that's why like, they find a way to manipulate the family. It's like where the husband's like, oh, I'm at work. I don't believe. They're usually able to latch onto a, like a person, like a child in the house, yeah. and manifest things through them. That's what they say. That's why the children freak out and the parents don't believe them. So the parents get frustrated over the kid trying to do this make-believe thing. The kid gets sad because the parents don't believe it. The parents are getting mad at the kid because they think the kid's tripping out. But then the parents are all, all they're doing is just feeding them the negative energy and it's just rippling this entire effect. Our, Next thing you know, uh, cat, you a couple of our recent episodes have been about a family that had a uh, four-year-old little girl that had an imaginary friend that was doing some pretty disturbing things. So. I'd love to meet this girl. <laughs> crazy. You can, listen to our, you can listen to our podcast and hear you the got, stories uh, and stuff. You got like, your Facebook page on this uh, card? Yeah, everything's on there. You can find us on iTunes, all that good stuff. So. Oh, let's see my you know, profile picture pop up. I know that. Dude. He's like, hey, I got him over here. Um, Alright, but like, I would yeah, love to like literally hang out with you guys all night to like, it's been no, a long day at work and went to the bar. And, yeah, hit us up on the on the website and stuff, man. Man, dude, EVP dude, you look as swagger as hell, man. Like, I wish I had you. Yeah, I told you you look good. It's nice to meet you, buddy. Um, other than this place and the uh, Kepler Center down the road, uh, although it's a fairly open place, the, uh, the lighthouse. Ask for Jimmy if you guys can go to the lighthouse. There's been a lot of uh, things happened down there. Yeah, you're right. Right. Hey, can, can, can I try a trick on your board? My board? Yeah, so it's it's oh, oh, shit, this is a uh, tinier one. Yeah, seven, seven, five. Seven, five. seven, five. You should have seen your dad back in the day. He had people convince he was Jamie Thomas. Thanks, Jojo. All right, I'm, I'm signing out for now, listeners. There you go. <laughs> listeners, we'll get back to you when we get to the Kemper I, I, Dude, I need a bigger light. Here we go. All right, we're back in the car. What was it, Josh and Mike? Uh, Josh and Mike, if you're listening to this podcast, thank you for the interview. Hope you guys made it home safely. Um, we're on our way to the Kemper Center, which Mike said uh, confirmed was haunted, which I have heard, and that he was doing a Ouija board out there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. stop, stop. Pull wait, over. we got to pull over. We gotta, I'm getting, I'm getting let me just pull over to a, a legit spot here. I'm getting something over here. I don't know what. Take the task into. But so, we're going. Dave's going. Dave's going. All right. So we're driving by. You guys coming? We're driving by, uh, you know, downtown Kenosha here. I'm not exactly sure what the streets are, but um, as we pass this building, I got a pretty good vibe off of it. Whoa. So I'm walking up to it right now. It appears to be a bank, I think, but I'm already getting like a 
like a tightness in my chest, which is not something I normally get, almost like I would feel when I'm having a panic attack. <sighs> yeah, there's definitely something here in the bank. Um, so this building looks pretty old, like, I mean, probably not too old. It says Kenosha National Bank on it, I think. There's a photography studio here. It's at the corner of 7th and 50, 7th Avenue and 57th Street. Did you feel anything walking up around the corner here? I got like this, I got this tightness in my chest. Like this, it's almost, it almost feels like, I don't know how to explain it. It's almost like acid refluxy. It's like this feeling right here, but I, di I didn't have anything before, but definitely getting something from this place. So, Gina Feeney Photography Studio, Stacy Houston Photography is where, what's that, right at the corner of the building here, but the bank is where I'm mainly feeling it. Oh, it says, there's cornerstone says 1927. So 6, 625 57th Street. My phone won't take flash pictures anymore, but I'll try to take some photographs anyway. So it looks like it was the Kenosha National Bank built in 1927. Yeah, I think it's definitely coming from this building. But uh, not getting the usual pins and needles tingling, but certainly getting like this. Yeah, like right over here as I walk up by where the drive through was, getting this like tightness feeling in my chest. Like maybe somebody died of a heart attack right out here on the street. But definitely a strong vibe there from me anyways. Narrated into the corner, but um, as I walk up to what is the bank right here, yeah, or used to be a bank, um, tightness in my chest, like a really heavy like pressure in my chest that I haven't felt before. Almost like you ever have a panic attack where it's like it's fluttering. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah, so it felt kind of like that, and I'm still feeling it. So I wonder if somebody had a heart attack over there. The, the only weirdness I felt over there was when I looked in and I saw those uh, those dresses in the studio. Yeah, yeah. But they were little girl dresses. Yeah. That's the only thing with the artness. You know, it's like I'm like I I felt a little to that. But that was the only thing I felt over there, and I think it might have been related to those uh, those dresses or something within that place. But it's not a very like around the area it was dead, but Joe. it was inside a building. Yeah. Stop. So I'm doing some research on yeah. the Heritage House Inn. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I mean, this is right off of Google. It's off a of wiki page. Yeah. It, uh, construction began in 1916, mm -hmm. and it was dedicated on January 20th, 1919. Yeah. And it started its life as an Elks Club. Okay. Um, in the 1990s, it became a, a famous, kind of a fairly famous banquet hall. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of notable people. Are you fucking kidding Wait me? a minute, I, Joe. I wait, wait. Uh, Dennis Hassert, House Speaker, oh, wow. actually you know, went there and hung out there as well with other famous people. But, Joe, what did you say when you first pulled up? Um, number one, I felt that there was a fire. I felt a big, strong thing with the fire there, and I felt orphans. During the afternoon of October 28, 2011, a member of the Kenosha Fire Department was passing by the, the building, now the Heritage House Inn, when they noticed smoke pouring out of the windows on the upper floor. Five separate departments from the surrounding communities responded to the fire. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and it's the, it, it largely took place in an upstairs ballroom, second floor. So you were right. There was a fire. You felt that. That's weird. Heritage House Inn. I wonder why they haven't torn it down. Well, does apparently... It have, does it have anything to do with any orphans or anybody die? Is anything about a strip club or is that... 
Yeah, well, n not in this not in this wiki. I could do some more research, but just real quick Google searching. There's something about like kids where like there was like something like would bury like a sadness with kids there. Yeah, well, it's saying that local radio station uh, claims it's a haven for the homeless, so maybe the fire was started by a homeless person. But uh, mm -hmm. you were right about the fire. When did, when was the fire? Well, was it October? You said? That was October 28, 2011. Oh, okay. oh, I wouldn't Seems like it wouldn't be too cold to want to start a fire indoors yet. Good point. <laughs> so that's just a little history about the Heritage House Inn. Joe hit that on the fire. And there's no evidence of a fire, right, guys? I mean, there's yeah, no... you can't really tell. No, so sure. good call, Joe. I'm sure if you saw it in the daytime, you might be able to pick out some smoke spots or whatever. But Well, you narrated this little trip you just took. Uh, I'll have to listen to that later because I stayed with the car. Yeah, I... Uh, and now I, we're headed I to... I got Kepler the Center. address in there of... Good. The cross street and Good. Stuff, so. so I could research it. It was Excellent. built in 1927. The cornerstone says that. And it used to be the Kenosha National Bank. So oh. I wonder if there's any robberies or maybe. I don't know. I, I feel, I feel like somebody might have just dropped dead right on the sidewalk out there. Well, a heart attack. I will research it. Cool. Headed to the Kemper Center. We'll be back. Why don't we park right. right here? Let's Listeners, we are back. Right We're right in the yeah, let's, Kemper let's Center. Yeah, let's stop, stop right here. Um, I don't like this. Stop right here, shut off the lights. Stop right here, shut off the lights! Alright, shut off the car. Dude, I don't like that area right That area is the worst. Alright, everyone shut up and let's get out. Hey. We're literally on the west bank of Lake Michigan right now. I mean, you might even be able to hear the waves crashing in the back. Uh, beautiful building. Old, old. We're definitely not supposed to be here at this time, but we will claim in this, uh, uh, ignorance because the gates were open. There is a sign um, describing what the Kemper Center is. I'll try to make my way around the building. It's a massive structure, so I'll try to make my way around and uh, this door right here and read the sign. But supposedly, the story goes, this was a religious. This, the heart. I'm telling you. We, we drove through. This is the fucking this heart. This is the of it. north side. So while we're walking, this was a religious institution back in the day, and the story goes a nun, a nun committed suicide or was killed in this building. It's pretty strong over here. So it's Ambrose Hall, which they're saying is the heart of the haunting. Ambrose Hall. This is the heart of it. As I get closer and closer, it's my life. Your whole body. It's very gothic looking. Let's not approach any doors. No. Dave. We're not. There's probably raccoons and shit down there. There's like all leaves on the steps and stuff. Yeah, we start approaching. Let's walk around in this courtyard. I feel like we can't be here very long. I'm sure somebody's walking with these trees. Video surveillance. I don't like it. I have a bad feel. Like I feel like a very stiff feel here. Oh. And I feel like this is yeah, newer. This is fun. newer, but maybe that's why it's a Dave, strong feel. Dave and Joe are freaking out. Because then maybe it's mad because that's newer, so it's more energy. Wow, look at this. I know. This is we're, we're in a secluded courtyard area right now. Um, it is very eerie. So just look here right away. That's creepy as shit. Just like one little lone stained glass window in a little cove. Uh, Dave, look at right here. Look at this. Come here, guys. Look at right there. Look at right there. The eyes just staring out the window. It's a big painting. It looks like a nun in a habit. Dave almost killed himself. Is it a nun? So the story goes, a nun was killed or uh, committed suicide here. Painting of a nun just peers peers perfectly through this window like she's watching you. Dave, be careful. Because I do want to go around the front before we get kicked out. 
All right, you guys look really suspicious. Let's walk. Again, with all the windows, man, I'm feeling like... Does it look like someone's standing right there? Right there in that window, does it look like someone's standing there? Come on, guys, let's walk around the other way. Ooh, I felt surprised. I think I just saw someone, dude. I'm not... I... Come on, let's walk. I feel like there's someone walking from my side. I think I just saw someone move. Do you see someone over there, or is that just... Try to... Oh, my God. Look in the window. Did you... Dave just took a picture. What oh. is that? I don't know. It's like some like oh. modem or something. Oh, it looked like two red eyes looking out of that window. It's probably the security system being tripped right now by us walking around. There is no Dana, only Zoo. <laughs> I am the key master. No, but seriously, the reason I feel like this is the newest part, or I think of the built art. This has to be the newest part. I mean, no, it looks I like the oldest old. part. I feel like this is the oldest part. I don't know. Okay. Ambrose, well, we'll have to research and yeah. see. But, it, but for, for some reason, this is this, this is the main, uh, the, ooh, I don't, but th- this is the, I don't know, that section, it's so dark, that little corner area. Talking walk. <gasps> I want to oh, The get whole building, it. this and then that. That's it. Look, everything else is creepy, but that's the worst. That's the heart of it. I mean, they're connected. It's the same shit. But then it's the heart. We were at the heart. We had to find out what that was. Guys, let's walk around this side. Hey, no, I want to go through the lake probably. No, she was supposedly killed inside. Pushed downstairs. Well, she was either pushed or committed suicide on the staircase. Oh, uh, jump on We'll Google it, but that's the story I got. But, but that is the heart. That is the heart of the building. I don't care what research says. That's the heart. Well, both you guys flipped out in that yeah. area. So now we're walking around the well-lit back area, the parking lot area, just kind of peering in the windows. Um, we're going to make it around the front. I want to read that sign for the listeners so they have an idea what the history of this place is. Dates and events, that sort of thing. Um, this is one of those areas, well, locations that uh, aren't ghost friendly, kind of like Hull House in the south side of Chicago on UIC campus. Um, so it's going to be hard to actually yeah, talk to someone here. Yeah, something over here. It's like hurting my brain. I'm getting something like over my right eye, like like in my forehead. Just watch the windows, guys. Just keep watching the windows. Or someone looking out at you. You heard that, Jojo? Yeah. Yeah. Very strange little architectural thing there. I don't like this. There's something evil and it's not good about that. We're walking through a some like an alcove, kind of a tunnel taking us from the back parking lot area to the front of Kemper Center. Um, still just trying to get a read, get a feel. We were already at the heart. This is not... I, it, it's it's, I mean, there, there's, there, it, it's very, um, there's energy, but we are already at this spot. That's, I, I'm ready to almost move on, because that's no, where well, it is. Well, that's where it was, in that, the first area. Because we, originally when we pulled up, we're like, whoa, this place is haunted. Well, when we drove around the back, we knew that's, that, that's the spot, dude. That's the spot. Well, you guys go investigate. Yeah. I'm going to go read this sign over here, so the listeners get an idea. You coming with me, Jojo? I'm gonna leave you alone. Sorry. Thanks. I appreciate that. See, so the Simmons Gymnasium. That's where we're at now. Simmons Gymnasium. You can hear the waves crashing in the background. I don't know if the Tascam can hear that, but Jojo, I'm just gonna read this sign real quick. 
So I'm walking over to kind of the historical placard just to read it for the listeners. Kemper Hall. Kemper Hall Boarding School for Girls dates to 1855 when St. Matthew's Episcopal Church and some dedicated Kenosha citizens signed a charter launching the Kenosha Female Seminary. In 1865, the school moved to this site, the home of U.S. Senator Charles Durkee. The name was changed to Kemper Hall in 1870 to honor Wisconsin's first Episcopal Bishop, Jackson Kemper. During its 105 years of educational service under the direction of the Sisters of St. Mary, Kemper Hall achieved prominence as a young woman's preparatory school. So there we go. Kemper Hall Boarding School from 1855. A lot of history here. A lot of history. So there's the religious tie there. The Saint Mary, Sisters of St. Mary. I guess it was one of the nuns of Sisters of St. Mary who was supposedly killed or committed suicide. Stories differ. Uh, one of them says she became pregnant, um, which was obviously a big no-no. So out of guilt, she killed herself. Others say cruel uh, students, girls I guess in this case, it was a female boarding school, uh, pushed her down a flight of stairs in this building. And she still haunts it to this day. I'm walking solo. I don't have eyes on any of the guys. So I am a little creeped out at the moment. Again, very gothic. I'm picturing some hooded monk staring at me from out of one of these windows. I don't know why it's male. It was a female boarding school, but I just get this male feeling as I'm walking and looking at this beautiful building. But uh, there's something a little darker here. I don't know what it is. I don't know where these guys went. Oh boy. Lots of windows. Just windows everywhere, my God. Oh boy. Wow, that is dark. That is that is that is really dark. Um Okay, goosebumps. Uh feeling it. Oh, feeling it in my head, feeling it in my neck, feeling it in my cheeks, feeling it in the base of my neck. Uh, don't like this area at all. Leaving, leaving. Goodbye. Ooh, I don't know what that was. Well, I am going to continue walking the campus, trying to find my partners here. Uh, Jason Knight, we'll get back to you. Finally, I found them. They were looking for me as I was looking for them. You guys want to go to the water? No, oh, we're good. Oh, but that's fine. I mean, you don't want to hit the water while we're here and check it out? I don't think it's a good idea. Where's your father? Okay, we're walking to the lake, which is probably 50, not even 50 yards uh, from the building proper. And we are now on the edge of uh, Lake Michigan. There it is. I don't know if you guys can hear the water. Waves splashing everywhere. It's really beautiful. Dave's worried about the cops coming. He's the one chucking rocks. There's Joe. So, I know I was by myself. Let's get back in the car and get out of here, guys. All right. I have a bad feeling. I know. Me too. But Come on, hey. Joe, go. Yeah, right. 
Gold Skull. Um, when Jojo and I walked over on that side. Which side? Try to describe it. The side that we were eventually we were like, okay, this is the heart. This is the heart. By Ambrose once, Hall. Once we walked around, Jojo and I were like, ugh. I don't like this. This is where it is. This is where it is. We didn't know that it was the end of the building. And when we started wrapping around, we're like, oh, shit. This is that area we felt before. Oh, when you didn't realize it from the front? No. Um, one more thing. When I was looking for you and I wrapped around to the front thing, the little staircase thing right there, the front door of the building, the actual thing, I felt somebody was looking at me. Yep. Um, and that was at the front over, you know, like uh, to the south west end of the building okay. the little thing right there like I just felt somebody was like there looking at me it very um, well could be if what rumors say are true but this is the heart the Ambrose Hall All right. the only other thing I felt was on the opposite side of the building and you know what I'm talking about with that uh, like uh, the south west end of the building that front door yeah the only other thing I felt, there, like something, was, but I felt something was looking at me. But something definitely here. No oh, doubt. dude, that's the heart, man. Right. That area. So, seems like reports are true. Now it's time to do a little more research on the Kemper Center. Back in the car, Dave Black has bad feelings. Yeah, so I definitely feel like it is. Dave, your opinion, Kemper Center haunted? Uh, yeah, definitely. On a scale of one to oh shit? Um, certainly areas of it are pretty high up there on that scale, but I don't feel that overall the entire place is like haunted. It doesn't feel to me like it's one of those places that's just a magnet. I feel like there's definitely certain spots where there's definitely energy, but. Okay, well, there we go. Where, where are they at? They're here? What the fuck? Where, where did they go? Wait, didn't didn't they get in the car? I thought they had. Did you hear them get out of the car? I never really saw them get in the car. What the hell? So we go to pull off, and Joe and JoJo are not in the back seat. I saw them get into the car, Dave. I didn't see them get in the car. I mean, I, I saw them outside of the car getting ready to get in the car, but then... They walked off or something. I don't know what's going on. Where did they go? That was really that was really creepy. They're they're back on the rocks. How the hell did they get to the rocks? That's how I'm getting the car. We honk and get them over. They're here. coming right now. I mean, what they're doing? What the hell? Wow, that was creepy, man. Good thing you said something. I would have been gone. Yeah, it's early. It's 3 a.m. The Devil's Hour, Witching Hour. What is a terrible '90s song about 3 a.m. I want to keep going. Dude, we pulled off and we thought you were in the back seat. All of a sudden, Dave's like, "Where's Joe and JoJo?" I'm like, "They were in the car. They're in the car." And I turn around, back seat's empty. <laughs> what's your What's he doing? Uh, taking pictures. Yep. All right. Well, I think uh, this was a pretty good expedition. This is what's going to happen. As soon as we are getting around the building to go to the gate, cops to get are coming out of here, in. A cop will come in here, <laughs> and it'll he'll detain us he for like an hour and a half, asking us questions. Why you got a kid here? Sorry, what are you guys sorry. doing? All right. I, I, for some reason, I just want to take a picture of the, the stars of the, the lake right there. Yeah, that's going to work really well on a cell phone. <laughs> no, I know, but the thing is, it has something to do with that suction. That's why it makes it, it amplifies it. Well, listeners, I think, uh, I think we're done for the evening. Um, we've talked about Dylan Bell. We streamed on Periscope and Facebook Live. We drove up to Kenosha and... Did some cold hunting and found some good spots, interviewed some people, and I think we're going to call it a night. Final thoughts, guys? I just can't wait to look into this building and see what that section was, man. I'm telling you, I know that's the heart. I can't wait to go to sleep. <laughs> well, that's how this podcast goes. Never early. Katie Knight, take us home. All right, so we were done, and then Jay was taking us a little tour on the way back. 
Um, and we just ran into another place that I'm going to get out and check that we just pulled up to. It's pretty crazy looking. Um, Jojo, can you get a picture of this place or a couple of pictures? Because my phone's out of battery. <clears throat> I'm going to walk up to it and see what it is. But I'm definitely getting some strong vibes off of it just from the street. It's a very bizarre looking house. It is... Oh, well, that explains it. It's the Hanson Lendman Funeral Home. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, all right. Well, obviously, this is going to be haunted. It's a funeral home. Oh, man. You're walking up the front steps. Oh, hello, everybody. Everyone's coming out to greet me. Whoa, it's pretty strong. Well, that explains that. Get a get a couple of pictures of the whole building. It's really interesting um, the way it's built. It's got like it looks like this old Victorian style house, but then at the top there's like this big round like spire dome thing, and then a, another little smaller square dome thing next to it. Pretty crazy. No, come on. There's, they probably live here. we got to get out of here. Doo -doo. So, yeah. That place is haunted as shit. It's a funeral home. Yeah. It's a funeral home. Yes. Wow. So Katie Knight didn't take us home. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Yes, maybe we should just pause it then. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll pause and see what else we come up with. Okay, Jay's trying to find this Masonic temple, and as we're driving, like, it's just all these old houses on the lakefront and all these old buildings, and there's just, there's way too much. Oh, man, this place is crazy. I'm going to get out and check it out. So there's a couple of buildings. There's a temple. There's, like, an old, what looks like a courthouse or a police station, another building similar looking next to it, and then... There's this place. Looks like it's 711. What's the street here? 711 61st Street. Oh, there's a light that went on. Really crazy looking house. I'm not getting a whole lot of vibe from it, but I don't think it was this place that was giving me the vibe, actually. I think it's the place next door that was giving me the vibe. No, it's this corner that's giving me the vibe. Away from the house. You feeling that? Yeah. No, like over here in the street by the bus stop. Okay. It wasn't it wasn't that crazy looking goony house that was giving me the creeps. It was this place. This old police station looking building. Oh, this is this is the this is the Mason's Lodge. This is what he was talking about. Oh really? Hi, Ron Cameron. So it was the this was the place Jerry was looking for. <laughs> that's pretty funny. In front of the Mason's Lodge, there's a bunch of masonry that's all just broken in the street. <laughs> Take a picture of that. Do you have your camera? Take a picture of the front of the place. Yeah, so this is the Masonic Temple that he was talking about. <laughs> Take a picture of this up here. Take a picture of that and that broken. They're not very good masons, apparently. Take a picture of the front of the building, too. <laughs> There's another piece of broken masonry. That's pretty funny. All right. So the Masonic Lodge that we were looking for was a place that we got. I mean, every house here looks like a, you know, a classic haunted house. 
Like if you were to look up haunted house clip art on Google Maps, like that's what these houses look like. Um, or I guess on Google, wouldn't have to be Google Maps. But yeah, it's pretty uh, pretty overwhelming out here actually. Just a lot of you can just feel the history and the buzz in the air. Back in the car. All right, so we are at the Kenosha Lighthouse now. The Southport. The South the Southport Lighthouse. Sure, right by the lake. We're on like a little peninsula out in the out in the lake here where there's like water on either side. Yeah, take pictures. It's kind of an unimpressive lighthouse. And then there's like a curator's house or like a watchman's house here that's haunted as well. Oh, yeah, that's... It's real. It's all very... Oh, that doesn't... That doesn't help. It's like just lit up by red light inside from the exit signs. It's creepy. So... The lighthouse apparently is still on and active. I mean, yeah, it's got like vibes, but it's nothing, nothing terribly strong. Very plain, kind of like almost a grain silo looking lighthouse. It's just pretty standard, nothing fancy. And this house is pretty much just like a square brick house. Nothing crazy here either, but there are some pretty strong vibes and the red light pouring out of it is definitely uh, creeping me out a little bit. Looks like the house is, like there's parts of it that are roped off or whatever. Like it's a historic house for people to come in and look at, like a museum. Hey, you guys want to take some pictures through the creepy-ass red light back window here? See if you can get um, some non-flash pictures just just in the room here. Yeah, you can see there's like a little museum set up, like. And when I brought my daughter here for her school project, the curator took us through a tour in here, showed us the original light and everything it was really cool. But he said definitely this place is haunted. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm, I'm there. feeling it, but it's not like there's nothing strong. It's not, it's not bad. Though. It's like a two or a three. It's like it's yeah, it's like a yeah, it's like a light low buzz. Right. Let let let's do this. Let's please let's just walk through these houses. No, I don't. I don't feel like walking here. If you want to walk over there, go take the task cam and walk over there. I'm not going to. Are you gonna walk I'm, with me? I'm cold. All right, I'll come on. Cold. All right. Because instantly, I I haven't felt like a ten, a nine, or an eight. Just every everything's been very mild. And I'm like, ah, I'm not feeling the stuff Dave is. It's like I, I feel a little bit, but not strong. What about Whoa. Well, I'm, well, I'm talking about after, after that. Oh, while we're doing this little tour. Yeah, the tour thing. I haven't like, been saying too much. And I'm like, all right. I'm like, you want to drive past some places where you feel some things? Okay. I'm waiting. When we pulled down the street, this is where I felt some shit. <laughs> what, 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 what is it called? Simmons Island. Okay. Simmons Island. There's three houses that are in... Uh, yeah, we got to be really quiet. All right. I'm going to let Jay take over a little bit because he's a little bit more. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, Joe's got really strong feelings, so we definitely want to come over I'm here. I'm going to go up and walk up to it now with the money. Wait, you cannot walk up to their house, Joe. You're being shot. Stay in front. Don't walk up to the house. Of course. Wisconsinites love their guns. Come 
walking down the street. <laughs> We're right in front of people's homes. This is strong. I don't like it. This house right here. Oh, I'm getting some weird. It's things. showing a placard from 1844, so it's old. No, no. You cannot go out to that house. Like it. It's fucking strong, this house. This is this, this Relax. Is don't go back. I'm in this one. Don't go back. That's trespassing. That is trespassing. I, I have a dead vibe. My whole body is just, ugh. This, this is, if you want to talk about haunted, I this, get this is haunted, like, and that's haunted. I get a flash in my head of like some satanic stuff, right? What do you think it was? It's just old. It's a lot of history. There's a lot of history in this house. DJ, do you feel that or no? I don't. I mean, it's definitely not we have kept up out, really we nicely, have to but... We find out what this house is. All right. This house, and this, house, this is the first one where I'm like, oh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling it, and then boom, and then boom. This house, not so much, but there's, this. I mean, are they not placed weirdly in the area? Yeah, yeah they are. This one, but this one over here, this is haunted. You want to talk about, this is a fucking haunted house. All right, let's walk. Huh. I want to know what it is. Oh, there we go, guys. And what is the address? Uh, can I run up really quick? No, quickly? you should not run up really quick. Like I could feel it from I over can't here. tell the address. The placard said 1844. 5012 on Simmons Island. 5012, Simmons Island. All right. So, yeah, we're, we're about to get arrested. Or shot. Someone they saw us. Um, so I guess now we will finally sign off. It's past three o'clock in the morning. The witching hour, right, Joe? Oh shit! What time is it? It's past three. Uh, isn't that the witching hour? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Now, Katie Knight, take us home, please. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the SOS Dash Radio podcast. Search SOS Radio Podcast on iTunes and give us a rating. Download our free mobile app by searching Supernatural Occurrence Studies on Google Play, Apple App Store, and Amazon App Store. Visit us online for ghostly photos that coincide with our podcasts, videos, and other exclusive content at SOS Radio.com. Chicago SOS. Dot com and SupernaturalOccurrenceStudies.com. Follow us on Facebook at SOS-Radio.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Chicago Ghosts. Subscribe to the Chicago's own Supernatural Occurrence Studies YouTube channel for exclusive video content. Follow Jason Knight on Google Plus. That's Knight. N H Y T E. Email us at submissions at sos radio.com and call or text anytime at 872 529 SOS. That's Chicago's area code 872 529 And as always, kind listeners, keep your head up, eyes open. And question everything. You want to save your soul from hell arriving on our range. Cowboy, change your ways today. With us, you will ride. Never turn.